Welcome back to module 2 of the video series on Intro to Highway Transportation Engineering. In this part, which is part 2B, we will look into how tractor resistance of a vehicle affects highway design. The learning objectives for this part include listing variables that affect tractor effort of a vehicle in motion, and then describe the impact these variables have on tractor resistance acting on the vehicle. Why is it important to study the vehicle factors in highway design? because it serves two important purposes. First, it provides insight into roadway design and traffic operations and the compromises that are necessary to accommodate the wide variety of vehicles that use roads, trucks, cars, what have you. Second, it forms a basis on which to assess the impact of advancing technologies, vehicle technologies on existing roadway design guidelines. Performance of road vehicles forms the basis for roadway design guidelines such as length of acceleration and deceleration lanes, maximum grades, stopping sight distances, passing sight distances, setting speed limits, timing of signalized intersections. All these things are dependent on vehicle performance. Track to effort and resistance. What are they? These are the opposing forces that determine straight line performance of a road vehicle. Track to effort is simply the force available at roadway surface to perform work. It is expressed in pound force or simply pounds or newtons in case of SI units. Resistance on the other hand is defined as the force impeding vehicle's motion. Again, same units, pounds or newtons. This acts opposite to track to force. The three major sources of vehicle resistance are aerodynamic resistance, which is directly proportional to air density, square of the velocity or speed, if you will, and frontal area of the vehicles. These are fairly straightforward and very intuitive. The second is rolling resistance, which originates from the interface between the roadway surface and tires. It depends on the tire pressure the condition of the tires. Why? Because it makes a difference if the tire has full tread or if it is the if it is bald. And also on roadway friction, which means that vehicle operates differently on a gravel road that has higher friction than how it operates on paved black tough surface. And the third source of course is grade or gravitational resistance. Let's see how and where these forces act on the vehicle. The mass of the vehicle is going to hold it back in direct proportion to acceleration represented by mass m times acceleration a or ma which is shown here acting at the center of gravity and along the line parallel to the road surface. Aerodynamic resistance ra is shown here acting on the front of the vehicle. Rolling resistance on the front wheels r sub rlf RL stands for rolling and F stands for front. And then rolling resistance on rear wheels, R sub RLR, again RL for rolling and the second R for rear. Because the vehicle is on a slope with an angle theta, a component of its weight W, the component which is parallel to road surface will act against the vehicle's forward motion. This force vector represents that grade resistance and we call it RG. These are the resist forces. Against all these resisting forces, the vehicle has to move forward. The force to move forward is available tractive force. Let's say F sub F represents the available tractive force to the front wheels, which is shown here. And F sub R represents the available tractive force to the front wheels, uh, to the rear wheels, which is shown here. According to Newton's laws, sum of all tractive forces has to equal to has to equal sum of all resisting forces. Therefore, FF plus FR equals MA plus RA plus RRLF plus RRLR plus RG. If we combine front and rear tractive forces and call it simply F and also combine front and rear, rear rolling resistance and call it simply rolling resistance R sub RL, the final equation representing the tractive effort and resistance is F equals 
MA plus RA plus RRL plus RG. And this is an important equation that uh, we will be using for solving problems. Aerodynamic resistance R sub A is proportional to square of the speed. We just mentioned about that. Thus RA will be much higher at higher speeds. RA is also directly proportional to air density rho and frontal area A sub F of the vehicle. What you see on the screen is a generalized equation for aerodynamic resistance of the vehicle. In this equation, CD is the proportionality constant and it's called the drag coefficient. Please pay close attention to the units. Area is in square feet, speed is in feet per second and air density is in slugs per cubic feet or kg per cubic feet in SI units. Wind speed, is, wind speed also matters but we will assume wind speed of zero for purposes of this class. We just noted that vehicle speed has the most effect on aerodynamic resistance. How does air density affect aerodynamic resistance? As the altitude goes up, air density goes down. Same with temperature. When temperature goes up, density goes down. Because aerodynamic resistance is directly proportional to air density, the end result of air density going down is aerodynamic resistance also goes down with air density. The chart you see indicate general, general relationship of air density with altitude and temperature. Drag. Drag is a result of turbulent flow of air around the vehicle body. The picture you see is a simulation of air flow around the vehicle and this is a crude animation of the same flow which is potentially creating a vacuum zone in the rear. We saw why aerodynamic resistance can have significant impacts on vehicle performance, particularly at high speeds. Aerodynamic resistance originates from a number of sources. Turbulent flow of air around the vehicle body accounts for approximately 85% of aerodynamic resistance, which itself is dependent on shape of vehicle, particularly in the rear. On a side note, some cars come with wind shear in the rear just for the purpose of breaking the vacuum formation and therefore reducing the drag. Friction of air passing over vehicle body accounts for about 12% of this resistance and airflow through vehicle components such as radiators and air vents accounts for about 3% of this resistance. We just identified three major sources of aerodynamic resistance. The drag coefficient is a term that implicitly accounts for all three of these sources. The drag coefficient is measured from empirical data either from wind tunnel experiments or actual field tests. In the field tests, a vehicle is allowed to de decelerate from known speed by controlling for other sources of resistance by other sources of resistance, I mean rolling resistance and grade resistance. Um, now a question, do some vehicles have more drag than the others? Are some people more drag than the others? I'm not going there again. Oh yes they do. These figures you see on the screen depict approximate range of drag coefficients for different types of road vehicles. Over the last 40 years, drag coefficient has dropped from about 0.5 to mid point twos for sedan type vehicles. It is still in 0.4 to 0.5 range for SUVs and trucks. You can also see on the figure to the right that pressure drag is lower for lighter road vehicles. For you car lovers, especially for the lovers of German made cars, one version of Mercedes CLA claims 0.22 drag coefficient, making it the slickest production car in the world, for now. This is among the lowest drag coefficients of all automobiles out there. We can develop an expression for determining the power needed to overcome aerodynamic resistance. We know power is a product of force and speed, Therefore, P 
P sub R A equals rho over two times the drag coefficient C sub D times frontal area A sub F and the cube of the velocity. Note that required power is proportional to the cube of the velocity at this point. That means the faster the car goes, the more power required to overcome the aerodynamic resistance. Now we are talking power, we are, we are we've gone one step beyond the force. Once again, force times velocity is power. We also know one horsepower is 500 feet lb per second. Therefore, dividing the above equation by 550, the horsepower required to overcome aerodynamic resistance can be computed using this second equation on the screen. Now let's talk about the second component in track two resistance, rolling resistance. Rolling resistance refers to the resistance generated from a vehicle's internal mechanical friction and pneumatic tires and their interaction with roadway surface. Primary, primary source, about 90% of this resistance, is the deformation of the tire as it passes over roadway surface. Tire slippage and air circulation around the tire and wheel it accounts for about 6%. Tire penetration, roadway surface compression, that accounts for about 4% of roll, rolling resistance. As we mentioned earlier, factors affecting rolling resistance include rigidity of tire and roadway surface, tire tread, tire inflation pressure and temperature, and vehicle speed. Due to a wide range of factors that affect rolling resistance, a simplifying approximation is used. Studies have shown that rolling resistance can be approximated as the product of friction term, that is, coefficient of rolling resistance, and the weight of the vehicle act acting normal to the roadway surface. And that's what the empirical studies have shown, and that's what we shall use. This friction term, called coefficient of rolling resistance, designated by F sub RL, where RL stands for rolling, it is dependent on the roadway surface characteristics. On a related side note, this is one of the places where the roadway surface is mentioned in the title of the course module comes into play. The friction is also a function of speed. The empirical formula used for vehicles operating on paved surfaces is FRL equals 0.01 times 1 plus V over 147, where the speed V is expressed in feet per second. The second equation shown here is for those of you who prefer SI units. Keep in mind, F sub RL itself is unitless. However, since grades are often small, the equation is further simplified by assuming cos theta g equals 1, which gives a slightly more conservative estimate, and the final equation going to be RRL equals FRL times the weight of the vehicle W. What is the power required to overcome RRL? Again, power is force times velocity. So therefore, PRRL equals FRL times W, which we know times velocity V. So the units are going to be feet LB per second or Newton meter per second. Converting into horsepower, you will divide that by 550 and the second equation on your screen is the horsepower required to overcome rolling resistance. Now to the third and last track to resistance force, grade resistance. This will be a fairly straightforward resistance force we can comprehend. Gravity offers significant resistance on inclined surfaces or slopes determined simply as a component of the vehicle weight acting parallel to the roadway surface. Again, the weight of the, the component of the weight of the vehicle acting parallel to the roadway surface. If the vehicle is traveling on a flat road, its weight acts normal to the road and normal to ground. Then there is no grade resistance to talk about. But if the vehicle is on a grade or slope, some part of its weight is acting parallel to the road surface, which is essentially the grade resistance. This is the vehicle going up on a slope with angle theta sub g. 
Its weight W acts normal to the ground, which is shown here in red. A component of that, a, that weight will act normal to the surface of the road, shown here in green arrow. The component of weight acting parallel to the road surface, parallel to the road surface, shown here in blue, acts against the forward motion of the vehicle. Using simple trigonometry, the value of this force factor parallel to the road surface is W sine theta. This W sine theta is nothing but grade resistance. Usually, highway grades are small, often less than 5%. For small values of theta, sine theta is equal to tan theta. Then, if you represent g as a vertical rise per some horizontal distance, tan theta is going to be your value g. Here, g is feet per feet or simply a fraction. Then, r sub g, which is the grade, uh, grade resistance, simply becomes w times g. What happens when the road is flat? Grade becomes zero and therefore grade resistance Rg becomes zero. Of course, if the vehicle is negotiating a downward slope, G becomes negative G and the weight of the vehicle acts in favor of the tractive force or it adds to the available tractive force. Then we subtract Wg from tractive resistance. That's on a downward slope. Uh, one more pointer here, grades are generally given in percentages, meaning that a 5% grade results, it actually represents a 5 feet vertical rise over 100 feet horizontal run. And the power required to overcome grade resistance will be simply force times velocity or PRG equals W times G times V. And the horsepower, you will divide that by 550, same as before. Now it's time to look at some problems on tractive resistance and look for the corresponding videos.